I think if we don't begin to have conversations about the struggles we're having up here, it's a matter of time before we see these struggles manifest out here. I wonder why you didn't go to his father, go to somebody, maybe somebody that you can sit down that won't judge you and say, here are the struggles I am having. But you see, church is a place I have found that is not a transparent place that we can talk about our struggles. It's, it, it's almost a place many times of pretense and facade. Because everybody walks around. How are you? I'm blessed. Highly favored. Highly favored. Highly favored. Struggling and lying, no joke. <laughs> Thinking about backsliding, all kind of things. How are you? I'm blessed. How are you? I'm stressed. If we can be a place to be transparent and say, hey, I'm struggling. Not to everybody, but at least to somebody. Because if you don't find somebody that you can be transparent, the, the devil will send an enabler to you that will fan the flames of your desire and take it from the realm of your mind into no rape. Oh. And she said, and she answered him, no, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing are to be done in Israel. Do not do this folly. And I, whether shall <laughs> I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, Speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. I see many times in scripture as persons try to implore logic. She began to reason with him. I believe, I believe she was so scared. She said, my brother, think about me. What's going to happen to me? Think about yourself. Think about the consequences of your action. But I have found when persons, I'll be honest, I've been pastoring for uh, going on 12 years in January. I've been a Christian 20 something years. I'll be very honest with you, pastoring is very, very hard. If I, <laughs> I'm very reluctant pastor, I, I didn't want this vocation, you know, <laughs> it's like God say go, I say okay Lord, but do I have to? Because one of the things I have learned, I know it's different with y'all Methodists, but you know, within the context of my congregation, People don't really listen to good logic. Sometimes one of the things that really bothers me, if I'm honest, as I'm getting older, I, 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 I struggle with the fact that in a, t in a time when getting older, time is precious, people sit down and waste my time. They sit down for counseling sessions, and uh, all the while you're talking, 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 and they make up their mind, they can do what they want, how they want, when they want. And just like they say, a cattle, when it's crossing the road, they say a cattle never turn back. Could it be a four big truck coming down? And I, I'm trying to think, anybody ever, ever see a cow turn back? They say when a cow set his head to cross the road, it's not turning back. And, and I've seen some cows in my congregation. They sit down with you and they, they want, especially when it comes to matters of the heart. When they want something, you try to advise them, da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. and they sit down there with hour, hour and a half talking, and at the end of the day, they can do what they want. Sometimes I feel like a rubber stamp, a spiritual rubber stamp, that they just come by me to get the paper stamp, because they can do what they feel like. And here's this young lady pleading, begging her brother, please, don't do this. Think about the future. Think about me. Think about what's going to happen. But I have found many times when people are blinded by lust, they don't think at all. 